It is hot out here, ladies and gentlemen. It is that time of the year. You know what I'm saying? It is the dog days of summer. A lot of people tend to believe that summertime is very good fishing, which obviously it is not bad. But for me, it has always been really about the transition months. Okay, the spring and the fall summer fishing can get pretty tough, right? So disclaimer of the day, okay, there's going to be plenty of fishing in this video. However, this is going to be a tutorial type of video. For the people who come here on the channel, they do not want to learn anything and they just want to see the fishing, you may want to skip, okay, to the fishing portion of this video. That being said, just yesterday I was reading the comments on the channel on my newest video, right, the catch and cook that I just published like two days ago. If you haven't checked that yet, I'm going to post a link in the cards, okay? And there was a pretty nice comment, you know, by a subscriber, uh, Brad Lucas. I'm just going to read his comment over here real quick, right? He said, I really wish I was able to eat more fish, especially self-harvested. I just cannot find a way to make it palatable to myself, I think, blah, 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 blah. Save money, calories, and of course, the house. And then we, then we go to the part of the video that really got me, you know, into the video today, right? He continues to say, Leo, as a lapsed fisherman who hasn't held a pole in years now, could you make a video about how you scout out fishing sites in unfamiliar areas? I am always nervous and scared of heading out to places I have never been and would be quite grateful in hearing how you start preparing your trips. So today I'm actually here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I have never ever in my 33 years of existence stepped over here in Lancaster, okay? Right behind me, you folks can see it, is the Conestoga River, right? Very nice sign over here, combined sewer overflow area. Hmm, that is just magnificent, you know? <laughs> but like I said, I've never ever fished this creek before. So without any more delay, let's get into this video on how I kind of, am I going to break down this spot to catch fish. If you are watching this YouTube video right now, I would like to emphasize that the beauty of your generation or even like my generation, right? Well, mine a little bit questionable, but it really lies in the fact that we are so lucky to have all this technology, right? And the internet with us nowadays. I mean, the majority of you watching this video right now, you didn't really have to go through 56 kbps internet connection, right? You all remember that? Dial, first attempt, you know, the phone is right next to the PC, right? You know, for you to get connected to the internet, good old AOL.com. So, I mean, now that you have the internet nowadays, at least use it for something productive. Don't just go on the internet looking for memes or some celebrity divorces, you know what I'm saying? First step, okay, in finding fishing spots is to use Google Maps for me. So before I came here, okay, to the Conestoga River, I went online on Google Maps, satellite images, and I just looked up different places around here that may be productive, right? Once I found its general location and a lot of green in it, which means public land, I went to the satellite view to look at the features of the creek. And you know what? When you go on satellite mode nowadays, there are so many fun things that you can do, right? I mean, you can even go into a street view to view, like from the street, 3D, how the spot really is, as you guys can see in this video right now, right? As a matter of fact, that photo that you folks just saw is exactly this fishing spot right here. Now you see how it is kind of a little bit different, right? The photo, like internet and the real deal. That's the point that I'm trying to make here. You use the technology and you use the information 
just for you to have a general idea of the place that you're going to hit. You can't really depend on all these things 100% because, say for example, that the satellite photos, right, they are a few years old. Or maybe when the person took the photos of this particular spot, as it was in this case, it was after heavy periods of rain. So all of the things, right, they were all submerged and the water was high. Now it is summertime and with my experience in fishing, well, I kind of deducted that it was going to be like this because summertime everywhere around me, the water level is lower than usual. So you kind of assimilate your pre-existing knowledge and wisdom to the technology. You do your research, right? And after that, we hop to point number two. Second thing that you want to do before you get the fishing started, before you even wet your lines, you want to make sure that you are fishing within the legality of the law. So before you even head out to the fishing spot that you're going to, right, make sure that one, you have gotten all the necessary licenses and permits for your state, and you have read the rules and regulations for fishing in your state it is actually very important okay that you also look out the body of water the watershed that you are fishing because some watersheds may have a special or additional restrictions to it so for example before i came over here today i went online to the pennsylvania fish and boat commission website and i looked up the trout map that they have over there i made sure that the conestoga river is not stocked with trout whatsoever so that i don't have to worry about trout regulations over here some other bodies of water around the area have regulations of their own for example around my area the delaware river a lot of people actually don't know about that but the delaware river has its own regulations and uh, finally you have to come out here eventually and look up at the different signs around the area because they also may have local warnings and local regulations of their own right so for example when you go to a dam you know that you're not supposed to wade 100 feet from it right if it is a dangerous dam like that if there's a sign right there that say so you're not even supposed to cast within 100 feet of it or 50 feet i don't remember in the state of pennsylvania and like i showed you guys at the beginning of this video right this sign over here that it just says combined sewer overflow area i don't really need to worry about it today because i got my waterproof socks that's number one and number two we didn't really have heavy periods of rain recently right as you folks just saw in the last section of this video but it is something that you may want to take in consideration right when they have signs that says catch and release only or signs that it says you know fish are contaminated so don't eat right so you have always to take a look you know at the state laws watershed laws local regulations and finally after you are done with all of that okay now i can just put my epf swim on and we are going to slay well that is pretty much it for the tutorial portion of this youtube video the last step is step number three is for us or for you to go there in person and apply all the knowledge that you acquired right to do the experiments that you have to do or in this case aka to fish all right so i got the one inch epf a swim that just escaped my hands real quickly even the lure <laughs> wants to catch fish right away right uh, i think i'm going to get started a little bit upstream from here i kind of chose this particular spot for starters because over here we have a set of rapids right and according to topography and hydrology obviously every time you have a set of rapids after that you tend to have a deeper pool and the same thing applies to above, you know, and below. So there's a deeper pool of water above over there. I'm going to give a few casts upstream 
and you know we're going to conduct a full species assessment over here right how many species do you think we are going to to land well i don't know watch the video I i'm curious myself so you now watch the video and those shall find out oh yes notropis on the gulp in the mouth son i know that i told you all i was going to start with the bigger fish but i mean you know so many micros around here right you can't come to a spot like this and not micro fish i mean that would be a crime uh, against humanity yeah look at that you can make this up no tropis in the mouth okay oh a little piece of gulp hey <laughs> I don't know if you all can see it or not. There are some over here and some swimming over there. There's actually a whole school of a swallowtail shiner. The Notropis procne is swimming right around here. I bet you didn't expect our first species of the day to be one of those, huh? Check it out, check it out. Oh yes, it is very, very tiny very very tiny so we have to be very very careful all right i just took photos of this dude he's been super healthy inside the photo bucket all right on the tanago hook i'm going to release it over here now our first ever fish even the small ones count okay from the conestoga river there we go going back right where it belongs now you see I didn't really bring any worms with me today for the micro fishing. So what I'm using <laughs> is the gulp mullet. Just recently, as you all know, I caught a 19 inch keeper down in New Jersey, summer flounder, the Paralictis dentatus. I never really removed the speck from my, from my bag, right? So what I do is I just get the little tanago hook. I take one tiny piece from the front of the lure so that I can still use it, right, for flounder fishing in the future. And I just put one tiny pink piece. Look at that. See that? Heck yeah. And there are a lot of darters around here too. So, I mean, we're getting started with this Wallowtail Shiner. Who knows what's going to show up next? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's one that is just a tad bigger down there, right around that area. I can tell you all that there are a lot of darters here in the Conestoga River, but the majority of them are very tiny. I've been trying to find a jumbo. Haven't really found a jumbo yet, but that size is actually pretty good. So I'm going to spend 10 minutes or so trying to catch that one. Just kind of put it right in front of it. I finally got myself a daughter. Woo! 30 minutes to catch this daughter here, which uh, I'm not so sure which one it is. We're gonna put it in the bucket. Oh yes, oh yes, check that out, huh? 45 minute <laughs> targeting darters down there, but the grind actually paid off. We got here our first green side darter of 2022. It is a species that I already have on my life list, but regardless, it is my first one of the year, right? I'm just going to release it over here real quick, okay? By the rocks. Go back where you belong. 45 minutes. 45 minutes out here targeting little darters with the Tanago hook. Do you all think it is worth it? Well, I tell you all what, as a live lister, I feel it is very worth it, right? I also got some underwater footage just now of all the different darters down there swimming peacefully. We got the small ones, bigger ones. But the problem is the majority of them over here, they are very, very finicky and picky when it comes to feeding, right? These ones that I call the green side darter, Eteostoma blenioides, 
they're still kind of biting down there but there is another species down there called the banded darter the etiostoma zonale that i've caught in the susquehanna river in the past i kind of see a few of them around pieces of wood around here and even on the tenago okay with pieces of worm i actually went out of my way to dig a worm and put it in the tenago <laughs> as you all can see yeah they still didn't even touch it very very finicky two of them kind of came over pecked at it right but it wasn't like Woo! you know what i'm saying it was like that kind of stuff no bueno so anyways i just spent all this time we got two species so far i think it is finally time for us you know to move a little bit cast the epf swim and see if there's some bass panfish or some bigger species around yeah that's a banded killifish fundulus diaphanus entire population of them Wallowtail shiner, Metropis procne. Okay, fund was the afano I haven't caught today yet. Oh, fish on, boy. In the current. Just saw a bunch of being the killer fish that had a smallie. Got my EPF is swim. Yeah, that's gonna be the first game fish of the day. So powerful. Conestoga, huh? I like that. Yes, yes. Kind of reminds me a lot of the Susquehanna River yeah, and all the other creeks around my area. It's a beautiful sample too. Healthy. Look at that. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, easy now, boy. Easy. Let me wet my hands here real quick before I handle you, okay? Yeah, all right. White EPF swim. Top of its mouth. Healthy Conestoga. Smally, the Micropterus dolomio. There is definitely a reason why these fish are called bronzebacks when they grow up. I mean, just look at the colors, right, and the patterns on that fish. Conestoga smally. I'm gonna let it go now. First game fish of the creek here. You folks can't really see very well, or maybe you can, but there are a lot of tiny shiners swimming down there so i'm just casting my epf swim around the current over here it is not particularly deep around the area of the, this area of the creek right but i really just do think that if there are some game fish they would be eating these little dudes right so the epf swim is a perfect imitation for it i've been walking down the conestoga from our initial micro fishing spot for quite a while i have yet to find a, a, a a deeper hole so i'm just really really hoping that sooner or later you know we're going to find something uh satisfactory oh lord oh i lost it dude it's right in the shadows too Son, whacked, <laughs> whacked, absolutely whacked the EPF grub. I just switched to the EPF grub right here. Conestoga has so many bass. I was casting the EPF swim, so I kind of thought maybe they got too used to it, right? I saw two bass down there so far in the range of one and a half, two pounds, but the majority of them has been just about this big so i'm skipping a lot of footage here <laughs> on the channel let me see what time is now okay let me see what time is now right now is okay 2 46 pm i only have about 30 44 minutes left to fish so yeah i'm gonna go a little bit more downstream i think explore one more hole and then we're going to call it well, uh, well before we go though got to give a few more casts towards the shadow there one thing i learned about the conestoga today is that if there's one 
there's usually more. They kind of schooled up all the smallies here. But that one that uh, that hit was like nice size though. Oh man, I can't believe I lost it. I think whacked the EPF grub too. It's probably just waiting in the shadows for something to fall from the tree, you know? Like something like that. Okay, maybe not like that, but. It'd be funny if there's other people around and hear me talking like this. I'm talking to myself. Yeah. All right. Let's just fish. Mmm, boy. Mmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Little small. Alright, come on. Usually they say that if there is one, there is more, right? Especially in this place right here. It's all small though. But every time you hook one, the entire school comes to kind of check what's going on. And uh, when the school comes to actually check, on the fish that you're hooked that's when you get to see the one and a half two pounder kind of like the leader of the pack you know what i'm saying <laughs> but the leader of pack doesn't bite obviously i mean i think you will have to use like a live crawfish or a crawfish tail over there for that one to hit maybe too finicky oh yes it is time for us to go sadly i have run out of time for the fishing today i mean i am in lancaster you know what i'm saying it is a little bit far from where i live in, in bucks county right anyways i hope that this video was a great inspiration okay for the folks who haven't really fished for a while right i know that that fellow who commented under the channel he's not the only one out there i understand that sometimes it has been so long since you know folks have picked up a rod that they really have no idea how to start or where to get started right so this video is like it's a good video you know for beginners right to just go on google map find some spots out there around your area right and you guys saw it right i mean you ladies and gentlemen saw it there are really no secrets when it comes to the stuff you just need to pick up your fishing rod get some bait and go out there and adventure, you know? Bokensha mode, 120%, right? I'm going to leave the numbers over here on the screen, okay? We're finishing the day with only three different species of fish here from the Conestoga Creek, I mean, excuse me, river. However, I would like to emphasize that from the holes that I have explored today, the holes that I have hit, I've seen a lot of good stuff over here, okay? Like, if I came back, like, say, tomorrow, I would, I, like, I know which lures I would bring, which areas I would hit, and obviously, my chances of catching the bigger smallies that I saw today, they would go up as well, right? I, let, let me just tell you this way, okay? If I actually brought some Caprilan stuff over here, jerk bait or top water, if I had it with me today, okay? Oh, we would have landed some some good stuff you know if i had like the euro tackle meta crawl finesse collection all right on a football jig we would have landed some decent stuff but today was really just like scouting right first time ever you need to find the fishing spots right locate the fish kind of see which different species are swimming down there so, I mean, the knowledge is all here when it comes to the biodiversity here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you really watched this stuff, you know, and you got some knowledge to take for you for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? I'll see you all again in two days, hopefully. Tight lines and take it easy.